Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Our departure leads to the fact that we're literally begged to stay longer to train new employees, or the business will just fall apart. We refuse. The second story. Sometimes the CEO has a public email, and sometimes turns out he reads it. The third story. The boss is an idiot for having temper tantrums. Not what I need, so I leave like half the employees later. The first story is, Today we killed our company. They don't know it yet, but me and my buddy just got hired on with a different company. Without us, they literally don't have a business going. Not an exaggeration. They haven't had anyone apply to job openings and work staff has declined from 12 to 3 of us. Only 3 of us doing the work of 12 for years now. For months we've asked for raises after years of stagnant wages, working through the pandemic, expecting us to wrap our lives around work. Always met with excuses about it's not in the budget. We're putting in our two weeks notice days apart from each other. When I put mine in all of a sudden money magically appeared in the budget to keep us. This peeved my boss off because he really believed they didn't have the money. Told them if we both leave, he's leaving too. My boss never lied to me in eight years of knowing him. So come Monday, they have less than two weeks to figure out how to hire new staff, get everyone up to speed including training, and pray there are no major hiccups, all while the holidays are approaching. Only reason I'm staying my full two weeks, I want to see it go down. See what carrots they'll try to dangle to keep us, and the looks on their faces as I repeatedly decline each offer. Edit 1. Continued. The fallout first day. Pretty mundane. No direct contact with owners. Was told from my boss they asked if I could be bought. If they matched pay, would that be good? Declined the offer. Said I can't be bought into staying. I'm working my two weeks and not a day more. Don't really care about holiday bonuses. Keep them. Second day. Buddy has offered three bucks more over what new place is paying. Plus a hundred bucks each time he needs to travel. Not per diem. Think of it as a travel bonus, but each time a trip is made. Oh, and can he also stay around to train the replacements? The replacements who also aren't certified and fresh from school. They wanted him to pass up a much better job opportunity because the only people they could find to accept the job offer are fresh from school. Needless to say, he declined. My boss decides to feel bad and decided the ball is in his court. What about the past few years where if we go, you go? Well, I wanted to, I really did. But at my age, where am I going to find a better offer? I'm only a few years from getting social security. After I get health insurance, I won't need work anymore. What's a few more years? Proceed to fill him in on how much health insurance has changed in the past decade. <laughs> Third day by this time, news is spread to the rest of the company. The accountant decided he'll just go back to being retired. Doesn't need to deal with this headache. Office manager decides he can do this job remotely. If they won't offer remote, he'll find another job. Then the pilots got wind of everything. Holy SH, this is when things got amazing. A normally reserved, well-mannered person of a pilot wrote the most scathing email I've ever read. Years of frustration came pouring out. The resentment of missing out on family events, long hours, always talking about issues, never actually doing anything to fix them came out. He didn't quit outright, but OMG. Day 4 today started the day with an email from the boss. He decided to turn in his resignation. He found a job that pays the same for 3 days of set work versus the current 5 days and being on call 24-7. I'm selling my house, boys. He gave it a lot of thought. He doesn't like anything, haha. <laughs> His neighborhood has changed so much that job isn't a place he wants to stay. He decided at some point next year he's selling his house. He's going to pursue a life on the water. I've never heard him so happy. Let me rephrase. The man has never been happy, but when he spoke it had this calm overtone to it. Wouldn't fill me in on what the new job was, but he wants to be closer to the water and enjoy working around the docks like he did when he was in high school. Now I get a call from the owners. Ignored. If you've never ignored a call from a person in a position of power, you really need to try it. Give a call back about an hour later. What's it going to take to keep you? Is there anything we can do? My friends, this. I finally had the ear and undivided attention of the owner. But an odd thing happened. I didn't hate the guy. As much as I wanted to rub his face in it, just to unload how much I've hated it here, I realized with that phone call there wasn't a winner. Just a person investing his time into a business that was crumbling before him. Me an employee just tired of trying. No man, there's nothing you can do. I'm just moving on to a better opportunity. I don't hate you guys. This is something I need to do. Then in that same moment, compassion at all time highs, they ask if I can stay on for a few months to train the replacements. Did you hear anything? 
Absolutely anything, I just said. Nope, not training anyone. Once I leave, that's it. There's no way I'm traveling that much. Best of luck, click. Then left work. It was a nice day out today. I'm not spending it looking for busy work. So that's that, my friends. A bit anticlimactic, but that's usually how things go. The start date for the new job got pushed back till February, so I have roughly six whole weeks to just enjoy life. Apologies for not being a better writer if reading seems a bit choppy. These are the highlights. When I put in mine, all of a sudden, money magically appeared in the budget to keep us. If they can magically find the money, that means they could have found the money a long time ago. Besides, even if you get the money now and stay, they'll still cheat you out of the raise in the future. Just walk away. Companies that can't afford to pay people what they're worth shouldn't be in business. Sooner or later, they'll hit rock bottom themselves and pull you down with them if you stay. While they were giving you the carrot, if I were you, I'd remind them that they wouldn't have this problem if they had paid you accordingly all along. It's important that such people understand that it's their fault. They too often rationalize these things or blame others. The second story is... How the Richest Man in the World Sent Me a New Steering Wheel This story takes place a couple years back around the first week of December. My birthday is the last week of November, so I usually take advantage of the Black Friday deals to get something nice for myself. I've always liked sim racing games, realistic racing games for those who don't know, and I had busted my crappy steering wheel during the summer, so I decided to get a decent one off of a big retailer named after a rainforest, as they had the cheapest price on the one I wanted, 200 euros instead of the more typical 400 euros that it usually sold for during the year. So I bought it, it was on its way, life was good. The day it was supposed to arrive I got an email. There had been an issue with delivery, so they would reschedule. I called customer support. They marked it as a priority delivery, and that same evening my wheel came. As soon as I saw the package I knew the wheel was effed. The box was almost completely destroyed, wet and covered with adhesive tape. I recorded myself opening the box just in case, and I found out everything inside the package was destroyed. The wheel was cracked and the casing was split in two. The buttons on the right side were hanging by a wire, and the pedals were misaligned with the rails in the pedal box. I immediately called customer support, and the poor guy talking to me on the phone was super apologetic. He tried to send me a new one, but you see, the computer would not allow him to do so. The computer said that there were no units left in the warehouse, so I had to make do with a refund and buy a new one in the future. I asked him if I would be able to buy it at the same price I bought it for and he said no. So I would have to pay full price? Yes. That was unacceptable. I asked to speak to someone who could override the computer, and maybe just write somewhere that as soon as a new wheel comes in, send a new one to this fella here. I could wait. They passed me on to a supervisor who repeated the same mantra again and again. The computer says no. I can't go against the wishes of the computer. There's nothing we can do. Alright then, let's keep escalating. There must be someone here with executive decision making power, right? I asked to speak with the supervisor's supervisor, and they told me that I could not be passed on to her but that they would ask the manager to call me as soon as possible. About one hour later, I get a phone call. I ask for someone who can either A, send me a new wheel whenever possible, or B, send me a coupon so I can buy the wheel at the same price in the future. The manager says that she can't do either of those things, and that my options here are limited to taking the cash or keeping the wheel. I ask for her manager, and she says the worst possible thing to say at the time. There's no one above me you can talk to. I'm sorry, if you want to reconsider your options, you can call me again at this number, and we will get your return started. No one above her. She works at the world's largest retailer. The only one with no one on top is the CEO, and she sure as hell isn't him. So what can I do? I sent an email to the man himself. You see, I read an article years ago about him, and apparently he has an email address of the nameatcompany.com variety, which he likes to read in order to gain a more customer POV on issues vibe. Sometimes when someone escalates a complaint to his email account, he may take an interest on the issue, and SH gets done. So I shoot an email explaining the situation, and asking him for help overriding this computer who's apparently taking over the company. 24 hours later I receive a reply from a VP level exec from my national branch of the Rainforest Company, with a confirmation that a new steering wheel was on my way, and kindly requesting that I send the old one back for analysis. They were even sending a messenger to make things easier. To this day, I'm convinced that a senior VP at the largest online retailer in the world had to run out to his mall and buy a steering wheel to send my way, because I decided to email his boss's boss's boss. That's pretty darn cool. Usually people would have screamed their heads off and just hung up with the refund in hand. I admire your perseverance. You know, the customer service at Rainforest is the best in the world, so their stubbornness when it was clearly their fault is amazing. There is no one above me you can talk to, 
Imagine the figurative beating the guy who ruined your tire got. But I don't think it was the CEO specifically. Rather, he probably has a team that handles the letters that come into this mail. This is a good way to go when you've already tried and failed to get enough support from the normal teams, because this team has more leeway. And the last story is, Boss called me a liar. I quit on the spot. A number of years ago, but a pretty good story. I was working at a startup which turned out to be a glorified temp agency. A dozen experienced engineers that would help clients fix gnarly problems for an hourly rate. I liked working with different clients, not being tied to a desk, and being thanked for hard work by the clients. At some point the boss, let's call him Mike, decided we needed a professionally designed logo, business cards, and website. Putting high-priced consultants in the field, he felt strongly that we should have business cards. I had hired designers before so I volunteered to find someone. I brought in some people I knew, nice folks, very talented. In the first round they presented some loose but great ideas, including a gorgeous four-color logo. Mike fell in love with it. The designer cautioned us that printing would be expensive compared to a one-color solution. Insulted by the suggestion that he didn't have the money, Mike doubled down and said he definitely wanted the four-color. The next week, the designer showed us refinements of the four-color solution. They were breathtaking. He brought a detailed breakout of the printing costs and insisted that we look at it right then. Mike turned white at the eye-watering fees. Then he said to me, you were the wrong person to take point on this. You must think we have Apple or Google money. I said last week you liked the full-color logo and wanted to go with it. If you've changed your mind, that's cool. We can use one of the other designs. He turned red and said, that's a lie. I did not say I wanted this. Now we all knew Mike was prone to outbursts and we learned to let it go. But calling me a liar in front of outside people? Nope. I apologized to the designer, went to my desk and packed my SH up. On the way to the front door, I had to pass the meeting room. Mike yelled out, we're not done here. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I made it clear I wasn't coming back. I'm too timid to quit a job without another job lined up but one of my grateful clients had given me a standing offer to come work for them. You can't deal with Mike's SH anymore. So I told Mike I was going to work for client's name. He laughed like a cartoon villain. You should read your employment agreement, buddy. He actually said, buddy, you can't work for any of my clients. Ha <laughs> ha, my clients. I reached into my backpack and pulled out the employment agreement. You mean this thing I never signed? They gave me the agreement on my first day. I read it, it had some wacky clauses so I stuffed it into a drawer to deal with it later. No one ever followed up. He was so mad he basically turned purple, forehead veins bulging the whole thing. I bailed and never looked back. Mike really effed himself, because everyone in the company heard about what happened, and in the next few months about half of them quit, not wanting to be embarrassed in front of a client by one of his outbursts. Oh yeah, it's another case of someone wanting to create a beautiful work, and then their eyes fall out of their orbits when they see how much good creative content costs. Pay your effing creatives. Red, white, purple, this guy is as colorful as the cards he couldn't afford. Also, I'd keep an unsigned letter on hand and make sure it wasn't a photocopy. I have no doubt this D would forge your signature to try to screw you over. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.